Of all the machines in the home, the television is probably the most mysterious. The very idea of a machine taking something out of the air and converting it to recognisable pictures would probably seem quite absurd if it hadn't actually already been invented. And all that's inside these machines is a mass of equally mysterious bits and pieces, none of which appear to do anything at all. There are basically two things inside a telly. The circuit boards that process the signal being picked up by the aerial and the picture tube or cathode ray tube that actually creates the picture you're looking at now. We'll be looking at both in detail later on, but surprisingly the idea of television started long before the days of electronics and cathode ray tubes. While an electric telegraph cable was being laid across the Atlantic in the 1870s, it was noticed that the resistance readings were varying according to the light falling on the instrument. Now look at this. Look I at that. say the needles moved. Oh, how did that happen? The reason was this resistor made of an element called selenium. If we cover it up, you should be able to see the resistance change. Not very spectacular, but this chance observation out in the middle of the Atlantic was really the first tangible evidence that light could uh, interact with electricity. This discovery, coming almost at the same time as Bell's discovery of the telephone, led to a rash of speculation that communicating in vision as well as sound would soon be possible. But no one could make it work. One of the reasons was the inadequacy of the selenium itself. It actually reacts quite slowly to a change in light, much too slowly to be any use for television. After the initial failures, more theoretical proposals for television appeared in the early 1900s, incorporating the newly invented cathode ray tube. But it wasn't until the 1920s, when powerful valve amplifiers and fast reacting light sensitive materials had been perfected, that the technology to make television possible had really arrived. A Russian physicist, Vladimir Zworykin, who had immigrated to America, patented an all electronic system in 1923. But I was keeping uh, after my boss all the time for permission to work with television. So finally, after several years, I was given the permission to do it. Now was the work I was looking for a long time. So I put my, all my efforts in this thing. I worked days and nights practically. And uh, after uh, about a year or so, assembled whole uh, system including the cathode ray pickup tube, which I called iconoscope, and cathode ray receiving tube, which I called kinescope, from Greek words. Needing more money for research, Zwarikin arranged to show his pictures to an executive from Westinghouse, where he was working. He wasn't very impressed. So finally he asked me a few questions, mostly how long did I work with this system and so on, and departed, saying a few words to the director of the laboratory. Later on I found out that what he said was, put his guy to work on something more useful. So Zwarikin's system was delayed, which left the field open for a young Scottish inventor. John Logie Baird was one of the least academic early experimenters. In his youth, he worked as a mechanic while also embarking on entrepreneurial schemes. Oh, Johnny, I was wondering about the undersocks. Oh, Do you have any on the go at the moment? the undersocks, oh. eh? That's a wee line of He also attempted to make artificial diamonds using the facilities of the power station where he worked. This will make me famous to create Dogged by ill health, he then moved to a warmer climate, Trinidad. Here he made attempts to start up a jam making factory, but was defeated by the local bees. I think everything's ready, isn't it? Back in Britain, he then started his experiments for seeing with wireless attracting a group of enthusiastic amateurs around him. 
By 1924, he had a crude mechanical system transmitting silhouettes. Oh, no. There it is! Oh, super! His main contribution to the history of television was really his flair for publicity, exciting the public's imagination. He also gave sets to very important people. Finally, in 1936, the BBC arranged trials of Baird's television. Oh, oh, good morning, Mr. Baird. We are the BBC, thank of you. course. Thank we will you. be with thank you, you any moment. In competition was EMI's all electronic system, similar to Zwarikin's. Baird's cameras were cumbersome and immovable. You're moving too much. In contrast, the EMI cameras were compact and completely portable. So Baird lost the competition. But undeterred, he continued improving his system and in 1946 showed a giant colour picture. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. But a week later, he died, aged 58. Since then, all television has been based on the EMI electronic system. This is direct television from the studios of the Alexander Palace. And now you're going to see and hear someone you know well. A mighty maze of mystic magic rays is all about us in the blue. Sight and sound they trace Living pictures out of space To bring a new wonder to you There's joy in store The world is at your door It's here for everyone to view Conjured up in sound and sight By the magic rays of light The heart of any telly is the picture tube itself. Um, if you look inside, you can see there isn't much inside really. In fact, there's nothing at all. It's normally a vacuum when it's working. We usually think of electricity flowing in wires, but under the vacuum inside the tube, the electricity is actually flowing from the neck to the screen as a sort of invisible beam, a stream of electrons. The inside of the screen is coated with chemicals called phosphors. And it's actually these phosphors that you're watching at this moment glowing behind your screen. The television tube needs a high voltage between the neck and the screen to make the electrons flow. You can see this wire going to the screen does look rather like the spark plug lead of a car, which also carries a high voltage. The device that creates the high voltage in television does have other uses. I made this plasma lamp entirely out of old television components. The main component